Hey everyone, and welcome back to Ducks and Download. In this comic book breakdown, we're going to be going over the High Republic, issue number 10, the grand finale for Phase 2's main run of the comic book series, and then Vader, issue 2, black, white, and red. And that one has gotten absolutely out of control, and I love seeing Vader in this peak of his power. But before we dive into that one, let's finally wrap up the story of the Battle of Jeddah. Kay will wake up to find Vildar in deep combat against the Herald of the Path. Wielding two lightsabers, Vildar using the Hand of Cyberus, a dark side relic to try and slay the Herald in a frenzied dark side state. Trying to save Vildar from any backstabbing though, Tay will then be thrusted back into combat with Yana and Shea, not to mention their little backup guard dog, the Leveler. We've heard about this fight from the viewpoint of Path of Vengeance, but now we get to see how that Path of Vengeance with Marta Rowe calling out to Yana will influence the comics. As in the middle of the fight, as Tay looks like he's almost going to be slain by the Leveler, Yana is called away at the last second by Marta's begging for her assistance. Looking up to see that the Herald being struck down by Vildar, they know it's too little too late. And Yana and Shea are going to book it while they still can. By having one of the parts of the rod with them, the Great Leveler will of course follow Yana and then will tie back into Path of Vengeance, which I can't wait to get that review for you guys coming out soon. After Vildar has taken down the Herald, he's about to utterly annihilate him when Tay is able to remind him of who he really is. Vildar accuses him of, you are just trying to tell me I am the Jedi. I am more than just a Jedi. And he's, no, 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 no. He removes all of his own ego and strips the dark side's power away from Vildar by simply reminding him, I'm your friend and I know this isn't you. I know who you really are. That helps Vildar remember the dark sorcerer of Tuned, the evil he saw in his past that he refuses to be a part of now as a great Jedi, ripping the relic off of him, Vildar is back, and the Herald is in their custody. We now get to see Maddie looking over a smoking Jetta, but a calming one as well. It seems the battle is over, Iram and Arano have gone back to their moment of peace. All has been found at the path of the open hand, and the Herald himself was more than likely the culprit in every problem that reared its ugly head on the Holy Moon. After Maddie's able to breathe a little, we get to see Tay and Vildar coming out with the Herald now in cuffs with the other half of the Great Divine Rod that controls the Leveler, and perhaps all of the Nameless. They're able to find him guilty for all of his crimes. This is when the doubt and this is when the circumstances all points right to the path of the open hand in Dalna, which is where things are, of course, coming to a huge end in the rest of the literature. We get to wrap up with this gorgeous ending that really brings a lot of things together and really gives us an actual good ending, I think. The great celebration is still held because Vildar knows with Jedi can have one thing, they can have togetherness. So the celebration becomes a rebuilding of the great holy city of Jeddah and everyone working together to turn the city back into a home for all those who need it to be. And in those final moments, Vildar, speaking about the convocation, Vildar invites Tay to become a part of that convocation. Tay, of course, flabbergasted as he is no part of anything. He is not in any major faith or any major guild. And that is the main point. Vildar has invited Tay to be part of the convocation of the Force to represent the everyman, the every woman, the every alien, the every person on Jeddah. We get a beautiful teary-eyed hug as they say thank you to one another. And things end in such a beautiful sense. Too bad all hell's breaking loose on Dalna. Again, guys, Path of Vengeance has been amazing. And Phase 2 really ramping up to try and beat Phase 1 in an action-packed ending. The Great Battle of Dalna and what's still yet to come versus the fall of Starlight Beacon. I can't wait to see where Phase 3 is going to go. And the High Republic has been such an amazing, crazy ride so far. If you guys want me to do another huge recap over Phase 1 through now to Phase 2, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to talk more High Republic with all of you. Don't forget to like and subscribe, but before we're too far into this and before we're over, we have to get back into Darth Vader, black, white, and red. The most amazing set of panels I've seen in such a long time. The limited color choice is always brilliant and such a stylistic design. I feel like this allows the story to really be the forefront of these comics, and it really shows as we get into part two of Hard Shutdown.
Whereas before, Vader was taken captive, he's still in almost a state of comatose as his captor gloats over him saying, you can hear me, but you can't speak, you can't move, you will only sit there and think and feel as I carve you into pieces and sell you to scrap shops all over the galaxy. Now we finally also get the reason as to why this person is so hell-bent on destroying and dismantling Darth Vader, seeing as himself is also very cybernetic. Well, it's his father. His father designed the suit, which of course is hilarious to think it's top notch because we all know that Vader's suit is horribly outdated. But it makes sense for his father was a crazy engineer who seemed to enjoy the torture of people as he was doing his work. He would test all of these new mechanics and certain circuitry and wiring on his son unwillingly. Well, of course, this man now holds a huge grudge against Vader as he sees him as the very essence of his father's work and the pain he went through as a child. Just as all of these amazingly huge, almost like vibro saws are kicked into gear, things go bad for them. Before they can even make a single cut into his flesh or into his circuitry, the saw goes wild, cutting into the person wielding it and everyone around them. People begin to choke and die as the man realizes Vader's doing all of this from that table without touching a single thing or moving a single muscle. He forgot the most powerful weapon Darth Vader has, hatred, anger, and the dark side. What an amazing set of power we get to see here and truly horrifying sense of Darth Vader's raw power as he's just lying there probably just screaming in agony and hatred as he can't stand by the idea of being useless like this, I'm sure. But that's where that story will drop off, and I can't wait to see where part three is going to go. And now we'll get on to the next story. This one, The Endless Mercy, has almost like a xenomorph alien kind of vibe, and I really love it. Vader and some troopers are out to find a missing doctor, needed or wanted by the Empire. While in these dark corridors, they find that they are hunted by these grotesque alien abomination-like creatures that are dragging away troopers in the darkness. Of course, Vader stands his own, cutting them down left and right as they swarm over him, not giving in as much as he can. He is eventually captured, though, and we see him then taken to this sticky, almost probably like a food processing place where a lot of these hive mind creatures would put food to then be eaten for later. We see him talking with another trooper. The trooper is scared and he, he wanted to die in battle. He doesn't want to die like this. Vader with his mask off, pulls the saber to him and then just starts cutting everything. He's not about to let these creatures touch him, grab him and try to eat him without at least taking a lot of them down with him. He knows what to do. Send this derelict ship into a planet, destroy everything, kill everything, but not until he's had his vengeance. Finally finding the queen, he speaks to it knowing that it's the doctor. The doctor transformed so many of her subjects that she was testing on into these abominations and then made herself their queen. She speaks to him about releasing his negativity, releasing his hatred, releasing his pain as she makes them one, a hive mind. Forgetting though that Vader will never give up on his anger, his hatred, and that pain of losing Padme and everything he sought and fought for. That will push him over the edge and give him the boost he needs to annihilate everything around him. Destroying the queen and sending the ship crashing into a fiery inferno. And of course, in pure edgy dark sideness, Vader rides the ship down, survives the crash, and walks from the flames, emerging victorious as always. But true victory will be shown in the last story, simply called Power. In this one, we return to Tatooine. That's right, everyone. We're back on apparently the most important planet in all of Star Wars. We will see a young moisture farmer struggling with his single mother, trying to just make a living in the harsh deserts of the twin sun. Going and selling their moisture within a town, he is then, of course, sought on by bullies. His droid kicked over, his cart broken, but he doesn't try to give up complete hope. This bully has always been a problem for him, and he knows he'll eventually be fine. But going back home and seeing smoke, he realizes that his house is now on fire, and it seems that very bully Wow, like what a way to go from bully to just absolute bad person. Has apparently maybe started the fire and our young poor boy gets to see true power as the Empire comes crashing down on this little party in the looks for a fugitive or a rebel scum. Even Vader himself is finally seen back on Tatooine 
This boy then sees that younger boy crying and running for his life as his mother begs and weeps. And he sees true power is not a bully on Tatooine. True power resides with that crimson blade, Black Mask. Some real Imperial propaganda, but all around fun stories. And I've been loving the powers and the raw emotion we're seeing from Vader in these black, white, and red comics. Absolutely loved this last week's comics. And I can't wait to jump into next week. So look forward to that comic communication coming up, as you know, every Wednesday. Thank you all so much for stopping by and enjoying another comic book breakdown. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Just make sure to go down below and hit the like button if you enjoy more videos like this and you want to see even more comic book breakdowns, vintage collection reviews, and black series figure unboxings. And subscribe. Have an amazing rest of your day. And as always, may the force serve you well.